And part of that is, um, you know, a, a distance factor. And to me, that's one of the reasons I'm so big on par fours. I, I do believe in the uh, classic ball golf approach on par threes that pretty much everybody should be able to reach the par threes. And so par fours are, and par fives are, are when different distances start to come into play. So if somebody, um, you know, you'll, you'll have a variety of driving distance off the tees on the par fours, and you'll have a variety of approach distances to the basket on par fours. And that's when I need to throw different discs from, comes into play. And hopefully, you know, you have to think about whether you're throwing uh, an eight speed or a 12 speed off the tee. And then you have to think about, am I throwing a fairway driver or mid range or sometimes a putter on the approach shot? And so uh, I, <laughs> that's part of why I spend so much time out there is I, I wanna make sure that every time somebody plays the course as much as possible, it's gonna be a different experience for them. Um, so they don't get bored and, and so they, they have a, a, a consistent level of challenge, but how they approach it and, and how they get rewarded and, and the different kind of looks they have on their approach shots will be different um, just about every time. Don't want it to get boring. So that's a great answer to your question, Chris. He pretty much pulls every bag or every disc out of your bag as you play, you know, to make it interesting. Like I think about courses that I'm interested in, like Northside Christian, uh, there is a variety of discs, but I think for the most part, there's a lot of driver putter holes, you know, uh, in this area in general, you know, and I think, um, what you're talking about um, is like the, you know, your leopards, um, your long rocks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. And for that matter, I've, I've always been a fan of, um, of uh, you know, shorter, trickier par threes where maybe the putter is a good option off the tee. That's a little harder to do these days because, you know, if you go back 20 years, the, the distance uh, difference between a putter and the longest driver was nowhere near the disc of the difference that we have today between a putter and the longest driver. So that makes it a little, uh, a little more challenging for the designer. But I think if, if you can make a good par three where a, a putter is a good option, um, that's, that's still worth doing. Mm -hmm. right. What is it about throwing a disc and shaping the shot that that sets up for you know uh, success for somebody learning to play disc golf well you know i mean you've probably had this experience as much or or more than i have when you have somebody who's never played today they can often throw a mid-range farther than they can throw a driver anyway you know until they until they learn to get the stroke to where they can take advantage of the extra speed of a driver it's not doing them any good and so I think if you can learn with something that's pretty neutral, you, you learn how to control the shot by controlling the angle. I think probably a lot of people today are, you know, they go, they go shopping, whether it's in person or online, and they get a whole bunch of different discs that they think are gonna do a bunch of different things. You know, those discs aren't going to do what they expect them to do until they have a, a baseline of how you really need to throw. So I think if you if you start with something slower and more neutral and learn to throw a turnover shot, you know, with actual turnover angle and a hyzer with actual hyzer angle and learn how to throw straight, then you can take some of these, you know, different discs that are going to flip up or, or S back or whatever they're going to do and you already are able to throw with a, a variety of different release angles. And now you can stick in those different uh, different discs and get different results. I've got a little um, practice spot on hole 18, one of my courses where it's almost, I don't know if you can see, it's almost like waist level to the, to the soccer field. And there's a line all the way down the other side about 250, maybe 300 and a little padded pole. And so I try to 
play a game and take every disc I have in my bag and try to make it go straight down that line. I'm yeah. not really, you know, I'm not really too worried about hitting the pole or whatever. I'm thinking about that line. I think that's a pretty good exercise. You might. That sounds like a good exercise. Right. Everybody should find themselves a field exactly like that, or they should come hang out with you for their practice round. <laughs> And I really like that too, because that straight shot is probably the hardest shot, especially for the rec novice uh, uh, player, the ones who start. And so when they typically find holes, such as Spring Valley number two, uh, which is just a tunnel shot with trees all the top of you, you know, the canopy all the way around. So you can't go high, you can't go low, and you can't go right or left. You've got to go right down the middle. And it tends to get the most consternation from the new players where they're like oh, i can't stand this hole they get up on the tee box and the first thing in their mind is oh i hate this hole and you see that repetitive conversation when you go to tournaments as well in that division because then those seem to translate to anything that has to be a straight shot with a low ceiling um but it's a it's a shot that you have to have in your bag in this game especially if you want to win any tournaments it looks and i wanted to talk to you that about the rope too because you you talked about that earlier um isn't that kind of what made the USDGC so, you know, what it was? I mean, I know the course design had a lot to do with it, but the rope and throughout the years, you know, it's just been a menace. And it, as a player, I've played it a few times and, and it's like, there's nothing else like it. No, and, and, and that was the original idea. And I've, I've always been a defender of that original concept. Uh, I think, you know, when it first started, Harold and uh, to, to some extent, Dave Dunapace uh, was involved in that. <clears throat> and that's part of why it's called the U.S. Championships, because their concept was to make something that was analogous to the U.S. Open in golf, which is known as having, you know, the most demanding fairways and uh, really being something different from what people play all year and uh, their answer to that was to put rope everywhere and that was something new at the time and i said look that's that's what this event is about and that's okay i think what happened was people saw that and said oh hey there's an idea and they just started applying it everywhere you know sometimes let me choose my words carefully um, sometimes because they would look at a hole and say, well, this hole isn't hard enough. And rather than spending time to try to find a way to reconfigure it and, and maybe make it more challenging without OB, they just said, well, let's put down, put down rope and that'll make it harder and, and we're good to go. So I think, you know, in its place, it was fine. I, I think. I mean, honestly, I think that's not the direction that this golf needs to go. I think we're, we've gone pretty far down that road and we don't need to. And so, uh, you know, my courses, uh, you know, that are, that are in my resume so far and the ones I'll be working on in the future, uh, my goal will be to make it challenging and enjoyable without having to put down a lot of rope. Mm -hmm. I noticed this year they, um, or maybe it was in previous years and I didn't notice, but they, they used to have a yellow poles and then they had a rope. I think it was yellow and then they had the string. So it was like one unit. <clears throat> so that was for the, you know, visually where you could see it was the OB. Well, they did away with the yellow poles and they added these rocks. <clears throat> and so, and then they mowed strategically, you know, so you could see, so, it was kind of different for me to see that. And The Rock came into play when Katrina was on hole nine and she had a perfect eagle opportunity coming in and she hits one of those rocks and the wheel, and she had a seven stroke lead at the time, uh, final round, everything, the wheels were falling off and she lost all the strokes back. And I was thinking, huh, USDGC is always causing some kind of controversy, but it's it's good for the game. You know, we played through it. We lived through handicap tournament. Chris, they, they had a year where they made it a handicap tournament. So they, they had the best championship in the world, and then all of a sudden it's a handicap tournament. I, I didn't really understand.